What's up guys, I'm Ravi Tanna. I'm making this video after using it for 2 months. I'm not a tech reviewer, I bought this phone for myself. Hence the title of this video is Customer Review. I'm shooting this video using Nokia Lumia 625. So pardon me for the bad quality of this video. First of all, many people are complaining that matte coating on E8 fades away easily after some time of usage. I have not faced such issues till now. I use this phone with and without cover. In fact due to matte coating it looks a bit more premium than other glossy version and matte coating provides better grip. Over the left SIM card tray is located. E8 supports dual SIM which is good but the SIM card tray is not good at all. It is made out of thin plasticky material. It is fragile. Whenever I pull it out, I worry about accidentally end up breaking it. Over the right, volume rocker and SD card slot are located. Volume rocker almost seem to blend in with the display, but it is easy to reach them. At bottom, micro USB port and 3.5mm headphone jack are located. Headphone jack is in the right position. It is in the right orientation when you take it out of your pocket. At the top power button is located, E8 is a tall device. It is very hard to reach this lock button with one hand. But I have downloaded this app called screen off to lock the screen so I don't have to use this annoying lock button whenever I want to lock my phone. Overall the design is great but when you look closely some part of this device are very delicate. I use cover to protect it, but covers hide the beauty of its design. The back of E8 does cut out gently. It is called dual curve design and yes, it provides better grip. Coming to the display, it is 5 inch full HD display and yes, it is quite good. It produces vibrant colors and has great viewing angles. But if you compare it to an AMOLED screen, these colors look dull. It is because AMOLED produces oversaturated colors. Videos and pictures look creased and sharp. E8 does not support 4K video recording, but it can play videos up to 4K. Thanks to Snapdragon 801. But in small display you will not notice the difference anyway. 2K, 4K all look same in small display. Yes it is cell CD but it produces deep black. It has great viewing angles. But the display is bit reflective. So it has great outdoor visibility. E8 runs on Android 4.4.2 with Sense 6 skin on top of it. Sense 6 is slick, fluid, simple, yet stylish. I have not experienced even a single lag till now. Everything runs smoothly. It is very simple and light skin. It does not have any unnecessary crap which you are never going to use. Blink feed is there if you like it, then it's okay, but if you don't, you can easily remove it. Just like this. E8 does not come with pre installed file manager, but you can easily move videos and photos to SD card directly from the gallery. These are some themes available and by applying it, you can change the color palette affecting things like blink feed, quick launch setting in notification tray, every theme has its own wallpaper.
it also changes the color of notification bar in some HTC apps like calendar calculator and in non HTC device notification bar remains gray. The HTC One E8 comes with upgraded boom sound technology. At first, I thought I don't need it, but these speakers are amazing. Boom sound delivers amazing gaming and music experience. E8 can handle any graphic intensive game and boom sound adds more fun to it. E8 is not a feature in smartphone. But it has some useful features like motion no gestures. You can double tap to wake the screen, swipe to right to open the blink feed. And a swipe from the bottom of the display upwards will open the screen the phone was on when it went to sleep. To launch the camera Simply pick up the device in landscape orientation and press the volume button. It also lets you answer phone calls by simply bringing phone to your ear. But these features are useless if the device is not held in perfect position, while it is to prevent accidental gesture execution. Coming to the battery, it has non-removable 2600 mAh battery and it is good enough. I get through the day easily even after heavy browsing and playing some graphic intensive games and it does not heat up easily like some newer HTC devices. If you are a light user, you can easily get through couple of days without needing to charge it. In addition, you get extreme power saving more which adds some more life to the battery. The camera is one of the biggest areas where HTC decided to drop the quality of sensor in order to bring the cost of the phone down to a more palatable level. It is not a terrible camera by any means. It can provide good results in adequate lighting conditions. It takes photos very quickly and camera interface is really interesting. You can apply bunch of filters which is fun. And functions like ISO exposure value white balance can be controlled manually if you know how to handle them. I use this control a lot. Yes it works, overall E8's camera is not good enough for me and if you are a camera enthusiastic person, you will be disappointed too. Its camera is almost useless in low lighting condition, less the light more the noise. These are some samples to give you a better idea. E8 can record videos up to 1080p at 30 and 60 frames per second and slow motion video at 720p. Front facing camera is 5 megapixel and it is good enough for selfies and it is also capable of recording videos up to 1080p. In addition there is Zoe camera in dual capture which I never use. 